Checking account. A checking account is a safe and reliable way to keep track of your money. It also has some features that require you to keep very close track of the money in your checking account so you always know how much money you have available. If you're walking around with money in your pocket, it's easy to pull out the money and count it. In a checking account, you're going to have to take some precautions other than that to keep track of your money. We have an example of a check register on the board. The check register will help you keep track of the amount of money in your checking account at any given time. There are three transactions that can happen in your checking account that will affect your balance. The first transaction is called a debit. These are the checks that you write. You can see that I've written some checks into this check register and here's the information that you'll want to write down. On the left hand side you'll want to write the number of the check. Each of your checks will have a number on it and we want to be careful to record which check we're talking about. In the next column you're going to want to write the date that you wrote the check so you know exactly when that, that money was taken out of your account. The description of the transaction will tell the business that received your check and it can also tell what you spent the check for. In this column you'll notice it says payment or debit. When you write a check it is called a debit and it's a way of making a payment to another company. This column has a little subtraction sign in it to remind you that when you write a check it must be subtracted from your account. The second kind of transaction is a deposit. We've written a deposit in our check register. We've noted the date, 428, and we wrote deposit. The deposit gets registered in another column. It gets registered in the deposit or credit column. That's because you're putting money into your checking account and will increase your balance. So when you put a deposit in, you put it in this account and that will be added to your balance. The third kind of transaction is a fee. Most banks charge you a fee for using their services. These fees might be flat fees for the month, they might be based on the amount of money in your account, or they might be based on the amount of checks that you write every month. You want to ask your bank to clarify what kind of fees your checking account has. When you pay a fee, you're going to want to record it in the fee column. In this column it says there's a bank charge of $2.95. The fee is a subtraction column. The bank will take the fees automatically out of your account and you'll want to make this note and be sure to subtract it from your account. In our sample check register, we started with a balance of $848.63. The first transaction that happened during this time period was that a check was written to Value Food Market. We recorded the check number as 482, the date of the transaction as 419. We gave a description, it was written to Value Food Market, and it was written for $43.68. Since this is a check, it's a debit, and you're going to want to subtract that amount. So we'll take our balance, $848.63, and subtract the amount of the check that we have written. That gives us a current balance of $804.95. You're going to want to practice by filling in the rest of this check register, and you're going to want to be sure to subtract your payments or debits as well as your bank fees. Don't forget, if something is in the deposit column, you're going to want to add that to your balance. You're going to get practice again on the second check register that we've provided for you and with consistent practice you're going to find that you're going to have a much easier time dealing with your own personal checking account. You received a check in the mail for $1,500 and you want to cash your check at Nick's Check Cashing. You read 1% Check cashing. How much do you have to pay to have your check cashed at Nick's? But wait. When you look at the other sign at Nick's check cashing, you read this. Zero dollars to nine hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. One point nine five percent plus seventy five cents. And one thousand dollars to $1,999.99, 3.25% plus 75 cents. The 1% check cashing is only for AFDC checks. AFDC is for aid to families with dependent children, a federal program to help poor children and families. So now what is your cost for getting cash for your $1,500 check? Let's do the math. You want to cash a check, $1,500. Now, if it was 1%, we could just put that in there, 
1,500 times 1% 1 is only 1% equals $15. But it's not 1%. Notice it falls into this category. So it's 3.25%. So 1,500 times 3.25% is $48.75 plus 75 cents plus 0.75 equals, so it costs $49.50 to cash that check at Nick's. And that's expensive. And if you do that four times in a month, you times that by four, so it will cost you $198 for four checks. Now that's a lot of money. Avoid going to places like this. You're much wiser opening up a checking account and trying to save some money. And if you keep on doing this, get in the habit, and some people do because they don't really understand percents. They're just happy, got a check for $1,500, they give you money right away, but my, you're paying close to $50 every time you cash a check for this amount. So, use your math skills for intelligent living. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, Press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.